I want to show the difference between uh, using Tesseract to do OCR uh, and show the limitations of Tesseract and then do the same thing with YOLO. Uh, both YOLO and Tesseract can read text, but there's, there's huge limitations on both of them. So I'm going to start with showing... I've got a directory of files, a directory of images here. Um, this one is an image that has just a bunch of text. It's really simple, black on white. It, it's uh, not a binary image, but it's just black text on white background. And it doesn't have anything else. Meanwhile, I have other images that have text on it, but it's not black and white. Uh, it's complex. There's lots of things going on in the images. All right, so knowing this, here's the first application. There's not too much code here. I instantiate one of these Tesseract objects. I load up an image. I tell Tesseract, here's the image I want you to use. And I pass in the uh, OpenCV image that I read in. And then this is how you get the text. And Tesseract does really well with that image that I showed. Let me, uh, this one here. All right, this is the image, this window here. And this is the text that it extracted from that particular image. So you can see, even though there's a few formatting differences, like here, there's a blank line before fundamental freedoms, and here, there's no blank line before fundamental freedoms. But otherwise, Tesseract does a really good job of re reading this text. However, if I do the same thing but I tell it to use these images instead, This one didn't find anything. Um, nothing there. Nothing there. On several of them, you can see a little bit of the text. Yeah, I don't think any of these ones are good examples here. Oh, there you go. So that previous one, you can see maximum. Went too fast. Uh, nothing to read there, nothing to read there. You can uh, see where it says kilometers per hour on this one. Anyway, it's not very exciting. Uh, Tesseract does not do a good job on this. So Tesseract does a really good job for things that have gone through like a fax machine and a flatbed scanner. Uh, just black and white text. That's it. So the next thing that I did, let me go back to my ID here. All right, this is the next example. I trained a neural network to read those street signs and then what I do is I print out all the results, I show the annotated image, and then I wait for a key. So let's do the same thing. We'll do uh, option number two. There you go. Let me move this over. So we can see M, C, anyway, this is the whole thing, street name. Um, let me cycle through a few of these images here. You can see I trained it to find stop signs, yield signs, speed signs, and uh, the street names. And then within the street names, I created a class uh, from A to Z. And you can see the results from here. 
so it can find the text, but it doesn't read it as text. It reads it as objects within an image. And if you try to read this, you'll see it doesn't make sense. It, it's, not, it's not in the right order. The order is actually there. If you take a look at the X and Y coordinates and the width and height of all of these boxes, you can rebuild that text. It's not great, it's not like Tesseract, but for something like a street name, if, if that's what you have to do, it can be done. And that's what I wanna show. Go back to the ID. In the third example, the third one is the same as the second, with one difference. I added just a few lines of code, these lines here, to sort the results. And there's a big block of text here. You can pause the YouTube video if you want to look at it, but let me jump straight to the results here. Uh, so what we want is the third application here. And let me move the window aside. So you can see now that it's sorted from left to right, it makes a lot more sense. And an application could also look for blank spaces between two boxes, and then it would know that there's actually a blank space here uh, between the L and the R. So you could split words up this way, if as long as it's relatively simple what it is you're looking for so it's not perfect uh, let me look for an example uh, here we go for example it thinks this is a V so if you take a look B V L A it's actually B Y L A uh, by land and the the D here it in incorrectly thinks that that is an O. So this is not a problem with YOLO. Uh, this is a problem due to me not having enough images to train. So I had a relatively small set of images to train and then these are the images that I kept out of training that we're looking at right now. But in all, let's see what I have. Uh, remember I have 26 classes for the letters, and then I have a few more classes for yield, speed, stop, that kind of thing. There you go. And if I bring up the menu here, you can see, there you go. So stop, yield, street name, speed limit, back of stop sign, and then everything from A to Z. And in all, I had 156 images that I used to train which for the number of classes that I have for 30 classes, 156 images is definitely not enough. The only way that this works is the similarities between the test images that I'm using and the images that I used to train here. And I'll just scroll through some so that if people are looking for hints as to how to mark up images, this is how I did it. All right, so that's dark mark, and this is the results of running inference on those images that I kept out of training. Speed limits, not very interesting. These are the ones that are interesting, the ones that have S H A N N. So Shannon Lake Road. You can see that here. Uh, that was found. Uh, I'm using um, Yolo V4 Tiny in this case. Uh, I don't. I very rarely use the full version of Yolo. I find that uh, Yolo Tiny is normally perfect for almost every situation. And the code is relatively simple. Um, let me, this is the one that doesn't sort. So you can see there's only a few lines of code. It loads the network here. It configures just a few items. I have a for loop that loops through all of the images. And what I do is I load an image. 
I, I get the predictions, I display the predictions, which is what we see here being displayed. Um, I show the annotated image on the screen and then I wait for a key to be pressed and it just keeps looping until it's gone through all of the images. And that's what it looks like. So I will include a link in the description below to the source code. If people uh, want to play with it, I've got some CMake files that are really, really simple. Actually, let me bring that up real quick. Um, this is the CMake file here. So I look for OpenCV. I look for Tesseract, Dark Help, and Darknet, of course. And then these are the three executables that I create and the three CPP files that are used. So this first one is the test rack one. The second one is uh, a very simple YOLO one using dark help and dark net. And then the last one is the same as the second one, but I added a sort function here in the middle to make it easier to read. Hope this was helpful.